Hi, and welcome to Bob Ackman Sports, America's top sports handicappers since 1978. This is the second of three parts of our baseball betting tips video. In this second part, I'll tell you how I pick my award-winning baseball plays and the computer models I've created to do so. And then, please watch part three as well, where we'll discuss why a guy like Rudy LaRussa has won world titles in both the American League and the National League. And what my thoughts are as to whether you should bet sides or totals, favorites or dogs. And how about betting the run line in baseball. Now, again, I'll leave these headphones where they are instead of putting them on so that I don't look like Jenny at Time Life Books taking your phone order. If you haven't watched part one, of this video, please do so after watching this part as well, because part one covers some intriguing topics, such as why betting baseball can be hazardous to your health. We also touch on what constitutes value in baseball betting lines, and finally, how the nature of the entire game of baseball has radically changed in the past 30 years. In recent years, I've personally developed sophisticated computer models to come up with my baseball plays. To do this, I started by inputting literally hundreds and hundreds of possible game variables and seeing how they affected a game's outcome. Things like, how does a pitcher's team do in his road starts as opposed to his home starts? Then I went another level deeper and I analyzed how that pitcher's team does in his road starts when he comes off of a win or off of a loss. Then yet another level deeper and you analyze how his team does in his road starts after a loss with his regular days of rest, how he does with less days of rest, or more days of rest. This is similar to what's known as a decision tree in management theory. And so on and so on. You should get the picture. Now after looking at so many variables and their consequent results, I boil down the whole brew to the dozen or so most predictive variables the ones that are most important in the winning and losing of baseball games. In the next step to creating a predictive model, I weigh each of these variables that made the final cut and assign it a relative percentage importance in that model. Continuing the model building process, I test that model. I test it and I test it and I test it over and over and over on thousands of previous games from different seasons so that the results aren't skewed because I created the model from a given season's plays. This is called backtesting and every predictive model ever created for anything predicting how a hurricane will track, how stock markets may move and how baseball games win and lose needs extensive backtesting. But I'm not done yet I still have two more very important steps, one finite and one virtually infinite. The finite one is that even if the back testing works to my satisfaction, it's still based on something that's not real time. It's based on completed games and therefore it's ex post facto after the fact. So I start to apply my model to real time games and bet them myself. But I don't yet release those plays until I'm sure this model works in real-time handicapping. Then, and only then, do I start to release plays based on that model. And that final infinite step? Well, I call it infinite because it never stops for me. The model becomes an organic thing and grows and changes if necessary as time goes on. This is important. The changes that take place in college and pro sports move at different speeds. Some changes happen right away, as for instance occurred when the National Hockey League put new rules into play a few years back. Those changes were designed to do one thing, to create more offense in a game which had stagnated to many low scoring affairs. And apparently low scoring affairs are not something the average American sports fan likes which is why I believe that soccer has never caught on in the United States as it has in the rest of the world. We're apparently just too impatient to wait for teams to score. When the NHL put those rules into play, instead of having a common totals line of four and a half goals a given game, 
you suddenly had a line of five or even five and a half goals on those very same teams when they matched up. That is a radical change. Other sports evolve much more slowly. As I noted earlier in part one, when I started doing this for a living, a starting pitcher's goal in every single game was a complete game shutout, while today that's almost non-existent. It's as if we've transformed into some alternate reality if you followed baseball for as many years as I have. Now on that note, we'll close out part two of this video. Please watch part three where I'll tell you why a guy like Rudy LaRussa has won world titles in both leagues and whether it's better to bet sides or totals, favorites or dogs, and we'll also talk about betting the run line in baseball. And in case you missed part one, please take a look at it because we cover some intriguing topics. We discuss why betting baseball can be hazardous to your health. We touch on what constitutes value in baseball betting lines. And finally, how the nature of the game of baseball has radically changed in the last 30 years. Again, thanks for your time. Make sure you watch all three parts of this video, which, if you follow its advice, will make you money. Again, thanks for visiting basports.com. Look around. And this is Bob Ackman's signing out for now.